So we're missing a torso and a head. They say one man's trash... Oh, my God. It's different. ..is another man's treasure. Oh, my word. Wow! It's something else. Nowhere is that more true than here, at Lots Road Auction House in Chelsea. What the hell is that? Oh, it's enormous fun. I'm still hunting for a gold Afghan carpet. 1350. This is where London's wealthy elite... You sure you can do without it, ma'am? OK, 14. 1400. ..come to refill their mansions with the latest trends. Is that sort of a play on pomegranates and stuff? It's a vagina, Nick. Yeah. I think this place is a bit nuts, isn't it? But with an auction every week, the staff are under constant pressure... Who accepted this? this? You're not taking it anyway. ..to find new items that will make the most money. I've spent here for £40,000. I think the monkeys are definite. ..and keep boss Roger Ross off their backs. I've got a short fuse, man. No, uh, no, no, but you need to apologise to me. I will hold resentments against member of staff. I will be watching for how they behave, and then I might explode at them. Welcome to the strangest auction house in Britain. Going, going, gone. It's a bright Monday morning at the beginning of January. Yeah, yeah. Happy New Year too. And at Lots Road, the valuers are gearing up for the first big sale of the new year. You've got, like, the original Star Wars. Exactly. That'd be quite useful. Exactly, and I haven't checked them all. You never know. You might have a gem. This comes from Berlin. You can try the two, three hundred, if you want. Yeah? Fabulous, but um, not, for, not for us. Not for you? What do you think of that, Andy? Well, the chandelier? Uh, had it not been for the hat, I probably wouldn't have taken it in, but someone wears a hat as magnificent as that. I think we're under some obligation to take their goods. So we keep just as a chandelier. Stocking up for the auction isn't the only thing on everyone's mind. Still fresh from the Christmas break, the staff are brimming with New Year resolutions. I made one that sounds very poncy when I was quite drunk, which was to identify the things in life that make me happy and do them, and identify the things in life that don't make me happy and stop doing them. I'm going to start using deodorant more. Start every day fresh. Notoriously intolerant boss Roger Ross has the most ambitious resolution of all. My New Year's resolution is basically not to get carried away and to be kinder and nicer to people. But the proof is in the pudding, you know what I mean? We always have good intentions at the beginning of the new year. Being nice and calm doesn't come naturally to Roger. No, no. Nick, we never let you speak to the owner, sir. Absolutely. If anyone's saying yes to that, you're out of order. That, Roger. Well, that's I'm what that it sounded like a yes no. to me. <laughs> if his resolution is to succeed, he needs to enlist the support of his staff. Anyone got any New Year's resolutions they want to share with us? I've got one. I'm going to make real efforts not to over-dramatise anything that happens here. So all the little situations that go on, you know, and I, I, I might get upset or whatever. Because I've reached a certain age, I don't want to get too carried away. So if you find me getting carried away, you say, are you, are you getting carried away? So, um... I'd appreciate it if you actually say to me, I think you might be overreacting, and that's good. Thank you very much. Bravo. My honest opinion is it, it will last about minus 90 seconds. It won't happen. While Roger's plan is to mellow out... Yeah, it's the last day of Mr Nice Guy. ..General Manager William Shuttleworth has made a resolution to toughen up. If that's the way it has to be. It's the way it has to be. William's main priority this year is timekeeping. Surprise, surprise. Right, let's go and have a word with Bob. I've been very tolerant, really, of people being grown up, adult, and coming in on time and making sure that they sign the sheets to show that they're here. Guess what you haven't done? What haven't I done? Signed in? Oh. It has to be done, otherwise... There is, and I hate threatening things, but there, uh, no, there's going to be trouble. I'm, too, I'm overworked. That's the trouble. It doesn't take any time at all. So please, please, please stop me getting cross. Just sign in. If people aren't prepared to just do something simple, like sign a piece of paper, then really it's pretty poor. So I'm grumpy and I'm going to write an email.
also hoping to make changes this year are the great and good of Chelsea, who are constantly on the lookout for new items to refresh their palatial homes. Making her first visit of the year is former fashion buyer June, along with her beloved Pandora. I got her when she was about 18 months old. I've always had whippets, and I wanted one this color. She was absolutely the color I'd always wanted. When it comes to color, June has got very specific taste. She spent the last six years looking for one special item. I've been searching for a long while for a gold Afghan carpet. So I come in from time to time, living in hope that one day I might find one. That's a red Afghan. That is the elephant foot pattern. Traditionally, they all started off red, and they would wash them down to get the gold color. These were probably the things you'd have in your country house and, and not in your London house. June's London house is already a shrine to her favorite color. In England, we don't always get much sun outside. And I think you have to create the sunshine inside. So that's why most of the house is shades of gold. But there's one blot on the gold landscape. This is the little brown Afghan, which is made in Pakistan, which I settled for because I was told by the dealer that I would never get a gold one and they were absolutely impossible to come by. I mean, they, they must exist. There are, there are a lot of them out there somewhere. <laughs> Auctioneer Nick Carter thinks he might have just what June is looking for. Is this colour work? That colour won't work. Won't work. No. So what shade do you want? Brighter? The first one I ever had is really lovely golden yellow. Yeah. It, it's very gold. I can look for something else that I can ask around the trade and see if I can find something else for you. Yeah. Thank you. OK. All right, well, uh, we, we know where we're going now, June. Yeah. What's the dog called? That's Pandora. She's very pretty. Likes lying on gold Afghan rugs. <laughs> well, don't we all? I'm hopeful that now he knows what I am looking for, that he might get one in and I will come and bid for it. <laughs> so I'm more optimistic than I was that I might find one. It'll be several years searching, so it'll be very exciting. June may be hopeful, but her optimism isn't shared on the shop floor. New items have been coming in in dribs and drabs, but they're still drastically short of the 700 lots they need for Sunday's sale. It's a bit sparse. It's not flowing in in avalanches of abundance as it once did. Um, so it's a little bit unsettling because it should actually be incredibly busy this time of year. January is a strong month, um, historically, and everyone should be back from skiing. I'm well in up. The valuers will have to work hard to fill the place up. Otherwise, Roger's New Year resolution could be put to the test. Dear me, who would even accept it? It's bizarre. It's the beginning of a typical week in January, but something strange is happening at the auction house. We sort of need a picture in front of the rostrum, don't we, where we've got that green... Boss light. Roger Ross is in a good mood, despite the fact that there aren't enough lots for Sunday's sale. It's looking sparse, but that's... For me, that's not an issue today. Roger is trying to stick to his New Year resolution to be nicer to his staff. Anyone who had a heart would look at me and know I dream of you. For inspiration, he's been turning to the work of a famous Nobel Peace Prize winner. I'm reading a book on Mother Teresa, which I found in my mum's house, and uh, I've been weeping. I'm interested in the, the, the genuine welfare of humanity and she was too. And the way she coped, she describes it, she, she could only deal with the person in front of her. But you would serve that person as if that person was Jesus Christ. And to me, that is like so beautiful. 
While Roger grapples with the well-being of humanity, General Manager William Shuttleworth's concerns are a bit more down to earth. Good morning, Ashley. Uh, Mon Cherie. Here we are. Good morning, Martin. His New Year resolution is to get tough on timekeeping. This morning, he's standing guard on reception. The plan is just to make sure that everybody's here on time and they sign this little piece of paper. Can I sign in, William? Of course you can, Meg. Yeah. Just. Like, we should sign in, but it does feel a bit like it's a bit of a made-up job, making sure it happens, like, just a bit like being at school and taking a register. It's a bit patronizing, I think. Timekeeping, it's not difficult. It's not difficult also to um, sign the sheets. If you sit and wait for people, then they yeah. sign in. If they haven't signed in, yeah, the trick is you wouldn't wait, would you? You'd catch them. You'd wait till 11 in the morning and go up to them and say you didn't sign in. So I think waste of time, I'd call it. I saw you, Riley. I was about to give you a call, just to remind you. Oh, that's all right. I saw you come in. And there's another flaw in William's plan. <laughs> The back door. Good morning. Good morning. Right, Hurley, ready to go. It's interesting how uh, uh, it's, uh, it'll be a little bit more efficient this morning already. So there's a little plus point there. With the management preoccupied, the pressure's on the staff to find enough lots for Sunday's auction. Well, I think it's rather nice, but I don't think it's three thousand pounds. Oh, this could be the thing for June. Nick has been searching for a rare gold carpet for a valued customer. I don't think that's going to be the right colour for her. Uh, I think she wanted something that was brighter. Is June a hard woman to please? She probably is. Yeah, I mean, she's taken her six years to find the right shade of gold in a golden Afghan rug. I think she's looking for something quite specific. The chances of us having found exactly that shade that she's after are slim. It's not gold at all, but you've got to say it's gold, isn't it? Yeah. It's copper. In their quest to find goods for the auction, the staff are also going further afield. Valuer Bob has just had a tip-off about a unique private collection that's up for sale a few miles away. Hi there, Bob Hayton. Hello, Bob. Hello. Hello. Okay. Right, so this is the collection. It's fantastic, isn't it? This collection of tribal art belonged to Stephen's grandfather, a former diplomat in Nigeria. He was given a lot of the items as gifts, but he really developed his passion over quite a few years after he actually came back to the UK. He sadly passed away a few years ago, and my grandmother had no interest in them, so I've been given the go-ahead to sell them to a new loving owner. Stephen's grandmother, Joan, met her husband in West Africa, where she was working as a secretary in the 1950s. He was always very arty, but as for collecting these figures, no, I wasn't over the moon with them because, as I say, a lot of them, I think, are ugly. To me, they became something that I've got to dust and polish and look after. <laughs> That's got some age, hasn't it? This is a Mende female figure. This was collected in Freetown, Sierra Leone. There won't be any others like them. No, they're absolutely unique. I am 93 now, and I know I have much longer to live, and I had visions of, when I die, somebody just dumping them, you know? And I thought, a terrible shame if that happened, knowing how he had treasured them and looked after them. So the answer seemed to be to try and sell them to people who would enjoy them as he had. For Lots Road, it's a precious find. As an auctioneer, if you get a really good collection, you have something that's completely fresh to the market, it's a really fantastic thing to have. Private, fresh to the market goods, just what you want. They're the things that make money. Making money is normally Roger's top priority. Ba, 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 ba. But this year, he's trying to do things differently. He's decided to give Valuer Meg her big break in the business. So the thought came to my mind that um, having a female, is that the right word? Yeah. Female, female. Having a female auctioneer would be a good thing, because we never had one. You never had one? Never had one. Yeah. Right, what's that about? 
Auctioneering has traditionally been a job for the boys. But Roger wants to change all that. Careful, he'll get injured. I think it'd be really important for us as a firm in the 21st century to have a female auctioneer. I think it will break up uh, the guys doing it. So yeah, bring it on. So something is estimated at five to eight hundred. Where are you going to pitch your first opening? We start at five. Do you not? Well, I mean, it's good that he's asked me. I'd be pretty annoyed if he'd asked other people and not me. It's something I've always meant to do. Well, to move things along, you'd go in at half. So, what, 450? No, half of 500. Oh, right. Do I see 250? Roger himself was the auctioneer here for 30 years. You very rarely find that you say, do I see 500, and someone bids. That doesn't happen. That's the Hollywood version. Roger was brilliant in his day. Can I see your bidding cards? He'd start up. All these multi-millionaires, people from all over the world, would be like children, and Roger would be up there. See your bidding cards. And they'd all literally hand, you know, like, he would control them all, and they'd be like, all these billionaires, millionaires, doing this to Roger, and he'd be like that. And it was just, it was great to see. I used to smoke in those days. So I had a fag in one hand, and I'd been given a gin and tonic. Mm -hmm. But instead of passing on his knowledge to Meg, Roger soon gets lost down memory lane. I remember about it. Well, I don't know if Harry has really teach me anything, but yeah, he was he was quite nice this morning. He was fine. He was, yeah, no, no, no beef yet. <laughs> Is it true that Diana Rigg told you off once? She did tell me off. Um, I why? Uh, why the guy that was bidding? He wouldn't show me his buyer number. So as the auctioneer, good point cannot sell it to you unless you show me your numbered card, because who are you? And it was my attitude to him, and she didn't like that. You know, she's a lady, you know. I think she used the word outrageous. But she used to come in a lot, did she? Yeah, we've had everyone here. Or uh, that's not quite the, the, the right expression. Uh, we've had many famous people here. This is Chelsea, right? So, yeah. It's midweek and time for the doors to be thrown open to the viewing public. Although they're still short of lots, they're not short of customers. Do you think this looks like Amelie? Yeah. <laughs> the tribal art collection is attracting a lot of interest. Oh, and this is the new foot. Oh, this is the new foot. You can see how it influences Picasso and all that sort oh, of yeah. thing. They're interesting. They feel good. And on a wall in a flat, be quite beautiful. Nick and Andrew are dancing to Barry White, if we're lucky. Oh, are you doing Barry White? Also browsing the sale rooms is Lulu, a Lots Road veteran for the last 20 years. She's here today with her Jack Russell, Maxie. You're going too fast right Carl. now. Could I butt in? Yes. <laughs> you were good. You... Oh, that's better. Now then I do a... <laughs> Lulu's day job revolves around thoroughbred racehorses, but she also has a lucrative sideline, buying and renovating properties in up-and-coming areas of London. Can you come down just for a bit? Come on. Otherwise, I'll whack your ass. So this is Pavo, who's doing all this, and brilliantly, may I say. Yeah. <laughs> this year, Lulu is doing up a new rental flat in Bermondsey. So we're so just happy. preparing last room, yeah? Yeah. On the window side to prepare. We need to fill in all cracks. Instead of furnishing the flat with cheap mass-produced items, Lulu is planning on buying everything from Lots Road. I actually like second-hand shops and things, so a lot of my clothes are second-hand. Not my knickers, but I love the thought of something that doesn't get wasted. Which you, you need a low table? Yes, I do. Lulu handpicks each item for her tenants herself. I think that the more care you take of them, usually, the more you respect and you care for someone, you hope that they'll do the same thing back. This is lovely. What do you think, Kevin? They're very warehousey. What lot number? Five, seven, eight. Four to six hundred. Okay. They're upholstered in Hungarian blanket covers. Oh yes. But Lulu's been so focused on finding the right furniture for her tenants. She's forgotten the needs of someone closer to her heart. That sort of thing. So you got one with a metal top and a wooden bottom? Huh? You got metal top and wooden bottom. Somebody's walked in it. I'll do it, I'll do it. 
Yeah, Maxie wouldn't have done all this. No, he's a good, well-behaved dog. Maxie, this isn't Maxie's. Go! For Christ's sake, Damn. just keep back! Luckily, the rug isn't going on sale in the upcoming auction. It is just spreading it. You know, the, if we don't get it off, it just spreads the bloody stuff. You know, I'm a vet's daughter, for God's sake. I spent my life clearing up shit. It's midweek at the auction house. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, good. And Bob's mission to find new lots is paying off. Tell me about these chaps. He's bagged another collection of tribal art. Tribal art appeals to all sorts of people. It is, it is popular because it's something different. It's not your Georgian brown furniture. That is a really nasty king. So if you've got one of those pieces popped on your wall, what a conversation piece, and it's money well spent. While the staff are working hard to fill the auction house up... A glory hole. General Manager William Shuttleworth wants to clear it out. This is where all good technology comes to die. Let's have a look in the back areas, just having a quick snoop. Having cracked down on timekeeping, he's now waging a war on dirt. What I'm wanting to do is to get this cleaned. It's a mess, and I just don't like mess. It's just offensive, so tidy it shall be. Clean in mind and body. That'll be the day. Right, let's go and have a look upstairs. Staff announcement, whoever's been asked to attend the mock auction with Meg and Nick Carter, could they please make their way upstairs? As part of Meg's training to be an auctioneer, Nick has arranged a trial run. The staff want to prepare Meg for every eventuality. Right, OK, we'll crack on with it. Just, just free form, just do whatever you want to do. Don't go mental, of course. Let's not have too many weird scenarios. So there, 100 quid. Come. What, man? I've been coming here for years. She must be the new Did clerk. Hey, I like your new clerk. She's foxy, man. <laughs> She's an auctioneer. You are <laughs> me. Go on. You can do it. So we move on to lot 42, the chandelier, five branch, showing on the screen. 100 in the room anywhere? 100 in the room. Do I see 120, 140, 160, 180? We haven't had anyone trained to auction here for years and years, so I think it's a lovely thing. No, we're with this gentleman at 200. It's not for everyone. She might take to it and then carry on doing it. 200 with this gentleman here. Or she might say, oh, I'm never doing that again. Do I see any more? And I'm selling to 333 at £200. Sold. Meg will have to learn how to cope with difficult customers. 360? Go on, it is a lovely armchair. Right, nice. Gonna have to rush you. Five, five with the gentleman. Five, seven with you. Six. Six. Six off. Six off. Six and the monkey pony. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for seven, sir. Do you give 7,000? No, I'm not. No, All right, too, we're much. With... too much money. <laughs> The worst thing that can happen during an auction is someone comes in with a gun uh, or a knife or someone, like, really scary comes in and sort of disrupts the auction. <laughs> get a hammer, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> you get that, you'll get that, you'll get people going, fuck, wait, bring the hammer down. But we've had people who can sort of get very sweary and stuff, so I hope no one does that to Meg. Four, three, six. No, I'm out, love. Nice to see you, babe. See you down pub, yeah? Well, what Martin didn't mention is what to happen when you get one wildly enthusiastic buyer. You're in again? 320. Sorry, sir. 340. In the last year, we've had two random Frenchmen, and they're literally buying every single lot without even looking at it. One ran up a bill of sort of something like £80,000 in one sale. And it's very hard as the auctioneer to know whether is this the best thing that's ever happened or is this person deranged? <laughs> Upside down, your buyer's number. It was a lot of fun. I think it probably went better than I thought it might do. Um, it's a bit overwhelming with all of uh, everyone doing it, but yeah, it's really funny. What's bring your number, please? Down. If you can, bring your hammer down. Two hundred thousand pounds to buy a three, three, three. Oh, thank you, sir. Very good. Three, three, three. Oh, thank you, sir. Very good. Three, three, three. Oh, Meg's next challenge will be to auctioneer for real on Sunday. I think she was a great start. Yeah, absolutely. I think she was clear, easy to hear. She had authority. She didn't get too flustered. And you kind of threw everything at her. Well, we tried, but she was unflappable. 
So if I was Carter, I'd be a bit worried about his job. The auction is now just three days away. So you might find some now. Yeah. Former fashion buyer June is back, along with her friend, Jilly. Come on, we can't be the crocs coming up here. Fabulous, that one. Mm. <gasps> Jilly and June often explore Lots Road together. Marvellous. No, I definitely those think those. Those. very special. It's so pretty. Yes, I could be pretty tempted on That's the problem with this place. You see things. You see you things that you don't, don't want. <laughs> hello, Jilly. Hello, June. Nick has found two rugs for June to view. If Nick hasn't found one that I like, well, I'll keep trying. I'm not going to give up now. <laughs> There's one out there somewhere waiting for me. So that's your first choice, June. Ah. Is it too big? Is it the wrong colour? That's a brown one, which I would say was probably made in Pakistan. It's too brown. Right, let's have a look at this one, then, June. Ooh. Now, this one is the 1960s. Oh, that's lovely. That's gorgeous. Now I see what you mean about gold. Yeah. Now, the only problem is I would need to have some measurements and see whether I can fit it in. Size. That's 205 or thereabouts. Okay. It's too big, but I'm prepared to go and check it out. Take some measurements and move mm -hmm. things around because it's such a nice carpet. It's, it's I wasn't expecting anything so beautiful. I'm excited. It's so lovely. I'm going to measure up and see, but there's no point in having a beautiful rug like that and then just covering it with furniture. It would be pointless. So I might have to keep on looking. Come on, Pandora. We'll have to make you a gold coat. <laughs> it's the end of the week, and the staff are sorting out the displays for the impending auction. Where does it come from? I reckon it comes from Thailand or Malaysia. I can tell you exactly where it comes from. It comes from Alpington in Kent. Hi, Bob. All right? Yeah. Looking sparse in here. It is. Roger has finally woken up to the fact that there's a shortage of stock. Got anything else here, guys, that we could stick a number on? I just realised you haven't got many lots, so I'm just looking around and going, well, we should put those in. But we don't want low-value, low-quality lots. But, Tom, they're here. They're standing in the sale room, so please just put them in the sale. What about this one, Tom? 48. Uh, Angela's waiting for an email from her. Oh, Jesus Christ. Talk about soft. The situation is putting his New Year resolution to be nicer to his staff to the test. I am not giving discounts on glass dining tables. 20%. No, no, I'm not. Tom, I'm not doing it. It's not flowing. It's in not optional. Optional. Do you want to have a look? It, have a look. Where is it? Also, I need to Oh, you mean it's not inside? Oh, good. Obviously, he hasn't stuck to his New Year's resolution. He's going around attacking people and being angry and aggressive for whatever reason. I don't know. No, no, no. Just tell us your price. Don't f about. Just you want 200 quid. Sometimes he can be intolerable. If you want to charge people less, I'm going to have to take it out of your wages. No, 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 no. just so you know. I'm just trying to work with the trade. Ooh. Well, isn't that good? William isn't sticking to his resolution either. What a difference a day makes. He's won his war on filth. Just the job. No, that's good. But is back to being Mr. Nice Guy with an open-door policy for staff who need to talk. It's an interesting part of my job description to sort of provide a shoulder to cry on when Roger's been rude to them, but uh, maybe I am too, too uh, much of a softy, but we have to calm things down and get everybody back. And I think so far, so good this morning. But Roger has a very different take on staff relations. You can say what you like about it. You can say the boss is all Fine, and I am I, I am a that's fine. It's not a problem because I know, you know, that I've got issues. But they have to be held to account too. It's no good them freaking out and saying, yeah, but you made me. All I'm doing is I'm triggering some previous trauma in their life and they're reliving it and they're making out I'm doing it all to them. And it's a joke, but they don't know it.
It's Sunday, auction day at Lots Road. Thanks to Bob's Hall of Tribal Art, the numbers are up, although they've still fallen short of their usual 700 lots. This one I've seen before. Now, maybe this is an early Playboy Playmate. Uh. <laughs> looks wise, it looks great. If you wanted to make yourself look, you know, like an intellectual and a, and a world traveler, you would buy all of this. You'd look like you'd very worldly cultivated taste when actually you'd really just made a trip to Chelsea of a Sunday afternoon. Today is a big day for Meg. She's going to auctioneer for real for the first time. I'm feeling OK. I'm not really thinking about it. I feel quite calm before the storm. The thing that is worrying me is getting the numbers confused, which I guess is something you either can do or you can't do, or you do so much that you become good at it, so... So everything is here, Gordon, nothing unaccounted for, right? Roger doesn't normally attend auctions, but today he's made an exception. He's already making his presence felt. He'll wander around looking for gangways. Within five minutes, he'll have moved that bit of furniture, he'll have moved that. I just think this will look good in front of the mirror. So Better. he'll want everything to look nice. That's it. Just in another inch, is it? It's a little bit bad, because I think he's only in today because I'm doing some auctioneering. <laughs> so if it wasn't for me, he wouldn't be here, and everything would be a lot calmer, probably working a bit better. It's also a big day for Joan and her grandson, Stephen. They're hoping to sell Joan's late husband's treasured collection of tribal art. I've no real interest in them myself. It's left me with a lot of dusting to do. <laughs> but I would like them to go to somebody who will appreciate them. So now we're going into the tribal art section here. It's all put together for the big-in collection. Lot number 652. The Volta Mask there, two in the lot on this lot, and 100 pounds, 20, 140, 160, 180. Bidding gets off to a brisk start. I'm out. I'm at 220 pounds with buyer number three. Three, three at 220, going, going. Go. So. An authentic collection of tribal art is proving popular with several dealers. 220, 240, 260. Anyone going to go 280? Yeah. 280, I'm bid. I'm on my right, 280. I now have 300. 300, is it 20, sir? Yeah. 320, 350, 380. 380, 400, 420. Yeah. 420, 450, 450, 480. No, I'm at 4, 450. I'm selling it then. 450, buy number 333. Three, three. So. It's exciting, of course, especially when you've got, you know, two or three people vying for it. That can, yes. You know, really yeah. drive the, the sale price upward. Okay. But it's not just dealers who are showing interest. Any advance on that? Ninety pounds. A private collector has also entered the bidding war. Right, 110, 120, 120, 130. Polar explorer Henry. 150, 150, 160. I'm no expert. I just know they're authentic African tribal pieces, and they're they're hard to come by. Um, there's a lot of fake stuff out there. I know that for a fact. 120 bid. I think I'm certainly bidding up against dealers. 100 pounds. Bid me 100. 50. 150, 150. Oh, 50. Oh, 50. They seem to have uh, got wind of the fact that there's some pretty special stuff there, so I'm pleased to have got away with some things which you know, I'm not looking to sell them on. I'll go in my sitting room, my other odds and ends that I've got from around the world. Going, going, gone at 150. Gone to you, sir. What's your number, sir, 160? Uh, 631. 631. It takes just over 15 minutes for most of the collection to be snapped up. 5, 220, 250, 280. No, I'm at 250, man. Netting Joan nearly 4,000 pounds. 451 at 250 pounds. Going, going. Gone, you got it, ma'am. That's yours. On the whole, we're pretty happy, yeah. I think there was only one that wasn't sold. And, uh, you know, if they all went to people who wanted them, mm. that's great, yes. Lot number 450. Next up on the rostrum is Meg for her auctioneering debut in front of Roger. Customer announcement. Please be aware, in the 3 o'clock sale, there are a lot of A and B lots. If she's not doing what Roger expects, he'll get a bit annoyed. So we don't want him to upset her. That wouldn't be any good, because then her confidence will go. You know, we need to build her confidence, 
not destroy it. So hopefully he'll be nice. The first big sale of the new year is in full swing at the auction house. Star lots include two collections of authentic tribal art and a very special gold Afghan rug. Well, I do love it. It's rather larger than I wanted. I probably can fit it in. So I'm not going to go mad. If I'm meant to have it, I'm meant to have it. But I, if there's somebody who desperately wants it, I'm not going to get into a bidding war. Oh, I'm standing on it. Sorry, June. You're not supposed to walk on it, did you? Sorry, June. Just to be admired. <laughs> Sorry, Junie. It is so pretty there. It's lovely, isn't it? Jim's still thinking about it, I can see. No, we're going to we're not going to get auction fee for our I'm going to be thinking about it for a long while. Lot number 78, chest, art deco style there. Behind the scenes, Meg is waiting for her big debut on the rostrum. I'm feeling okay. I'm not really thinking about it. I feel quite calm before the storm. It'll be fine. Uh, right, so lot number 242, we've got the armchairs, there's a pair of these. Meg is about to auctioneer for the first time in front of a real audience. One, that's it, sir, you've got them. And in front of Roger. You might want to take your jacket off, Meg, because you're going to get hot, darling. You might want to take it off before you get up there. Yeah. Right, so lot number 242, we've got the armchairs, there's a pair of these. I hope when I'm doing it that Nick will stand next to me and help me, because I think if I do it wrong, you know, he'll sort of quietly and kindly tell me to do it a different way, whereas I think Roger might just sort of bark at me and be like, you're doing it wrong. Don't do it like that. Telefo telephone bid here. What do you think Meg should look out for? I think she should look out for Roger, mainly. Yes. 250. I think Roger could be intrusive and disruptive and annoying for Meg, but I'm sure she'll overcome that. Well, at this point in time, ladies and gentlemen, we've got um, Meg here who is uh, one of our colleagues. She's going to have her first crack at auctioneering in public now. So if I could ask you, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Big round of applause to Meg. First time in our room. <laughs> Go on, Meg. No, you can do it. Oh. Which one do you want? Good luck, Meg. Take your time. Meg, I'll do that for you. remember to smile. Yeah. OK. Smile. Be happy. Good. Otherwise, I'll tickle you. Don't you dare. Right, 251 revolving oh, desk chair. Starting the bids at 350. Should I see 350? 380. Bid. 380, 400, 420. What I was really worried about would be Roger would be like, no, Meg, not that. Don't do that. And sort of publicly tell me that I was doing it wrong, because he does it with people on the phone bids. He sort of shouts at them when they're halfway through it. Do I see 120 anywhere? It's with this gentleman at 100 pounds. 20 with you. It's 120 with me. 140? 140. So it's with a the gentleman there at 140. What's your number, please, sir? So buyer 345 is buying it for 140. Sold. Well done. But Meg soon gets into her stride. 620 with me. Do you bid 650? 6... 6.50 on the phone. Do I see 680 anywhere in the room? Sounds good to me. She's awake. So, lot 270, the Damien Hurst, from the cradle to the grave. You're always nervous before. You should be. Really, I mean, once the adrenaline kicks in and then you get up on the rostrum, fear goes. You're just in the, you're in the zone, you're just doing the job. It's £160 with this lady, and I'm selling what's your number? To buy a 547 for one... Meg day. gets through 36 lots with barely a hitch. Sorry, what was your number again? 547, thank you. Lovely. Right, back to Nick. Oh, thanks. OK. Right, let's, so we'll I'll track on a bit left before I go. Let's give Meg a big round of applause. Well done, Meg. That's cool, yeah. Fab. <laughs> Did a great job. Thank you very much, Nick. So, number 288. Yay! What colour's my face? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That hits the spot. <laughs> oh, How's it you feel? That was good. I could just hear my squeaky voice. <laughs> Do I have a drawn But you did it. I did it. Yay. Yeah. Female optioneer. Never again. No. <laughs> I would do it again. Meg, thank you so much for coming in. It means the world to me. Is it really, Roger? <laughs> no, I think, I, think, I think you'll never know how grateful I am that you're the first woman in the history of Lots Road to actually be on the rostrum. And I think it's... Am I the first woman to have been asked? Have there been ones that have been asked and said no? Do you know what? 
if I'm 100% honest, I don't know. There might have been a woman auctioneer, but I can't remember. Oh, no, it's not even true. Oh, it's not even true. <laughs> but half of what I say is not true. So what's new? Yeah, so I don't know the answer, but in living memory, you're it. It's 5 p.m. and there are still several lots left to go. Yes, thank you very much, Kay. Okay, see you in a bit. Racehorse expert Lulu is hoping to snap up some chairs for her rental property. Yes, 350 pounds. As a seasoned Lots Road veteran, she's already got a game plan. I never put the first bid in. I usually wait until near the end. I come from behind in horse terms. Yeah, I'm not a front runner. I come from behind. I like that. Even in racing, I always worry about front runners. Will they stay the distance? Also hoping to stay the distance is June. She's reached the final hurdle in her six-year search for the perfect gold Afghan rug. I must be sensible. I don't want to pay two thousand pounds for it. June normally places her bids over the phone. The only bidding I've done live has been in charity auctions. So this is the first time I've actually bid in a sale room. So <laughs> I was a nervous wreck before I started. Right, next up, you've got this very fine golden Afghan carpet there. Um, unusual things to see nowadays. This is the closest June has ever got to achieving her dream. I'll start the bidding off at £600, 650 Anyone want to bid me 700 700 now my bid. I'm at 650 7 I've got. 750 now bid. But she's facing competition from an anonymous bidder. 850 900 Is it 1000 1000 ma'am? 1000 1000 What about 1100 I'm at £1,000. What about 1100 now? 1050 1050 1100 ma'am? 1100 I'm at £1,100. I'm with 374 at £1,100. Do I see any more? I'm going to sell it with 374 at £1,100. Going. Going. 1150 1150 1200 ma'am? 12 bid. 1200 bid. 1200 bid. What about £1,250? Otherwise, I'm at £1,200. Do I see any more? It's with 374 Gonna sell at 1200 against a trade. Going, going, gone. You got it, man. That's yours. Well done. Three, seven, four. Big round of applause to Jim. She's got it. She's got a carpet. Well done. That's it. Right. So, long and four out. I can hardly believe it. I bought it. It's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Here we are. Nice. Right. I can't wait to get it down and look at it. <laughs> I, I should be watching them rug tonight instead of television. <laughs> it's a 682 there, the armchairs, a pair, are bolstered in Hungarian blanket covers. It's the last lot of the day. I think someone in, someone in Hungary right now is lacking a blanket because we've got a chair. With virtually no one left in the room to bid against her, Lulu's hoping to bag the chairs for a bargain price. Charming lady bid. 400 pounds. Don't know I'm charming. Going once, twice, three times at 400. What's your number today, ma'am? 400. 425. I'm selling at 400 pounds. Going, going. Gone, gone. I'm just going to sit on these chairs, if you don't mind. Oh, it's just, oh, God, it does go down quite a way, doesn't it, Mochi? Come on. Come on, have a look. I like anything that's comfy, you know, that's cosy. Is that the most important thing for your tenants? Oh, no, God, darling. It's not just about comfort. It's a bit like saying you have your hair washed um, just to get it clean. I mean, it's got to look good as well. It's like a husband, really, isn't it? You know, you want them to be good and kind and loving and funny and humorous. It's good if they look good as well. Mine does. <laughs> Bright and early next morning, and the sales figures from the auction are already in. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was great, great success. So delighted. Yeah, ten percent up. Yeah, it went from one ninety to two ten year on year. You know. So yes, a, a good result. Yeah, a good result. The tribal art nearly sold out. I think there were five unsold. So fantastic. Bob Hayton did really well because obviously he took a risk because we don't normally have that many tribal. So it's great. We're on a roll. We're on a high again.
Meg is recovering from her auctioneering debut. To be honest, I didn't really enjoy doing it at all. I was mostly just scared. But, um, but I know that it won't be so bad the next time. But I, yeah, I didn't like it. I, <laughs> I wasn't having fun up there. But I was under the impression there were lots of female auctioneers, but I've looked into it and there aren't that many anywhere. So it's good. Um, yeah, I'm quite proud of that. <laughs> One Over in Bermondsey, Lulu's kids are helping her put the finishing touches to her rental property. So we put this chair... What do you think, Luz? The chairs are finding their place among Lulu's other Lots Road finds. She's sitting in this chair, Hello, chillaxing, and then Maxie comes and joins us. Nothing like a glass of champagne in the afternoon, Jean. It's been one of those days. That's fine. So what do you think of it? I think it's... Beautiful. Just a mile away from the auction house, June is celebrating the latest addition to her festival of gold. You can look at it for so long, yes. it's kind of mesmerizing. Yes. And I'm sure after a couple of glasses of champagne, it'll be even a bit more mesmerizing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy with it. And I'm no longer looking for a gold Afghan. 